Hello, I hope you're doing fantastic. In this lesson, we're going to do an overview of functions. Now, this is going to be a general discussion about functions and how to use them. So really what we're trying to do here is lay out a framework for understanding how functions work and how we can use them. Specifically, in this lesson, what we'll be talking about are function calls, function parameters, passing arguments to functions, and then finally about different ways that functions work. All right, let's get started. Do you recall that we said functions are like the verbs of a programming language? So if you want to get something done, it's probably going to involve a function. Now, the Arduino programming language, which again is essentially the same as C++ and a lot like C, the C programming language, is just chock full of different type of functions that do all different types of things for us. If you can think of something, there's probably a function that does it. Now, to use this grand variety of functions, all we have to do is type the name of the specific function that we want to use. That's it. You just type its name. And then you follow its name by an opening and closing parenthesis. And then sometimes you have to put values in between those parentheses. So let's take, for example, this function called digital write. So what the digital write function does is it wants to know a pin number on your Arduino and then it wants to know a state, either high or low. And once you give it that information, what it will do for you is apply either 5 volts, which would be a high state, or 0 volts, which would be a low state. So when we type this on, uh, you know, in our program, when we type digital write, that is called a function call. And that's just some terminology that you might hear and, and we'll be using throughout the course. And that's why I want to bring it up. We'll be going over a lot of terminology in this lesson. So like we just talked about, some functions require information from us in order for them to work. So this function, digital write, it needed to know two things. It needs to know the pin number that you want to write voltage to, and then it needs to know the voltage that you want, either high, which is 5 volts, or low, which would be 0 volts. So this information, the information that the function needs to operate, are called the function's parameters. Now you might be wondering, well how the heck are you supposed to know what the parameters of a function are? And that's a really good question because when you look at the word digital write, there's nothing in that that's going to tell you what the parameters are that this function takes. In order to know what the parameters are, you have to look it up in a resource called the reference. So the reference is sort of like a user manual for programming languages. Now for functions that you use all the time, like digital write, you're just going to become familiar with what the parameters are. So you won't have to look it up all the time. But for functions that get new, you know, that are new to you, you'll probably have to refer to the uh, reference frequently. It's really easy to use and you'll learn a lot more about it through the course. Enough about that for now. So let's say this again. The parameters are what a function wants or expects. But the actual values that you give to the function, so in this line of code, we're, we've got the number 3, and the state high in there. Those specific values that we give to the function are called the arguments. So this might sound like a case of semantics to you, but it's actually quite different. So again, parameters are kind of like the general definition of what the function expects. The function, in this case, it needs a pin number and it needs a state. The argument is the specific value that you pass to a function. So these specific values that I send to the function are called arguments. And when I give a function arguments, it's called passing, as in passing gas. So I pass arguments to a function. OK, so let's do a quick recap. When we use a function, it's called a function call. So we're said to be calling a function. And the information a function needs to operate are called its parameters. Now, the actual values we send into the function are called arguments. And we, when we send those arguments, we're said to be passing the arguments. So we pass arguments to a function. Whew! That's a lot of terminology. And keep in mind, that's, that's all it really is. It's just terminology. But the reason I want to talk about it here is because we're going to be using these terms throughout the course, and I'm sure you'll hear these terms elsewhere. So I think if you understand these terms, it will help us communicate better. Okay, so now let's talk about different ways that functions can do stuff for us. So some functions, like digital write, 
All we have to do is send them some arguments and then they do something for us. So, you know, we pass the number 13 and high to digital write and digital write goes out and it applies five volts at pin 13. So the function actually does something physical for us. Other functions return values. For example, the function digital read monitors a pin on the Arduino and lets you know the state of the pin, either high or low. So digital read, it has one parameter and it wants to know the number of the pin that you want to check the state of. So to make sense of this, let's look at this line of code for an example. We've got pin state equals digital read of three. So what this line of code does is it assigns the output of the digital read function to the variable pin state. So when this line of code gets executed, the function digital read gets called, and then we've passed it the value three. So again, three is our argument. And so what digital read does is it goes and checks the state of pin three. So it's either gonna be high or it's gonna be low. And then what it's gonna do is send that value back to our program. Now, when it sends that value back, it's called returning the value. So the function digital read returns the state of that pin. Then in this case, that value that gets returned, it's gonna get assigned to the variable pin state. Another example would be a Celsius to Fahrenheit converter function. It might take a number in Celsius and then return a different value, a converted value, in Fahrenheit. So it returns the Fahrenheit value. So if you want that value, that new Fahrenheit value, you need to assign it to a variable. All right, so far we've been talking about functions that take parameters. In order for them to work, you have to give them some information. But other functions, they don't need any information to work. So one common example is the millis function. So when you call the millis function, it's gonna go and it is gonna pull the number of milliseconds that the current Ar Arduino sketch has been running. So millis uses hardware that's integral to the integrated circuit that the Arduino uses, and it's gonna pull information behind the scenes, you don't have to do anything, and it's gonna return this value to you. And there's other functions that do this. You don't have to give it any information. It goes out, it does stuff, and it gives that information back to you. So in this line of code, the variable timing will be assigned the number of milliseconds that the millis function returns. Okay, now finally, there's some functions that don't take parameters and don't return values. They just do something when they're called. So maybe you're working on a project that waters plants at different time intervals. So you might have to make a function that simply opens a valve. So in this line of code, we've got open valve. So the open valve function, it doesn't take any parameters. It's simply gonna open a valve that we specify elsewhere. Now, when we use a function, it's important to realize that there's more than meets the eye. For example, do you know what DNA stands for? It stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. That's kind of a mouthful to say. So instead of saying deoxyribonucleic acid, people just shorten it up and say DNA. DNA is an acronym. It's a quick and easy way to communicate deoxyribonucleic acid without actually having to say deoxyribonucleic acid. So functions are sort of like this. So for every function name that you use, like digital write or digital read, there is a function definition that gets executed for you behind the scenes. The function definition spells out exactly how that function is gonna behave, what parameters it will use, whether or not it will return any values, and all the stuff like that. So in most cases, you're gonna care very little about the function definition. You're gonna be more interested in how to use the function. So the power of a function is its ability to reduce your workload. So programming languages are filled with tons of useful functions, some used far more frequent, frequently than others. And what you'll find is you're gonna get quite familiar with a couple dozen or so functions that allow you to do a whole lot. And then other functions, you'll kind of learn about them slowly and integrate them into your knowledge. So later in the course, you're even gonna learn how to write your own function definitions so that you can make your own handy user-defined functions. But that's gonna be for a later time. All right. So let's review what we've talked about. We talked about 
what it means to make a function call. We talked about function parameters. The parameters are the general values that a function expects in order to work. We talked about passing arguments to functions. The arguments are the specific values we give a function. And when we give them to a function, it's called passing. Finally, we talked about different ways that functions work. Some take arguments and then do something. Some take arguments and then return a value. Some don't take any arguments and return a value. Some don't take any arguments and don't return a value, but they do do something. All right, well, hey, you know, we talked a lot about terminology in this lesson and just kind of, again, an overall framework of how we're going to be interacting with all different types of functions throughout the course. All right, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Bye.